Okay, this is a screencast for part of RTI for 8.7a uh, 8 over the seasons. And we're going to kind of walk through how to fill in these notes. Some of these you might have a pretty good idea, but let's just go over them. The first day of summer is the summer solstice. It is the longest day of the year. The hemisphere having summer is tilted toward the sun and that hemisphere's pole is on the daytime side of the terminator. Next check mark long days and short nights. So you have long days and short nights during the summer. Next check mark you have more direct sunlight. The sun is highest in the sky during the summer. Sunlight is more concentrated and is concentrated into a smaller area. Again, remember all of these statements have to do with summertime. In the northern hemisphere, the first day of summer is the June solstice. In the southern hemisphere, the first day of summer is the December solstice. Okay. After summer comes the season of fall. The first day of fall is the fall equinox. The sun is shining directly overhead at the equator. In other words, the sun is shining equally on both the northern and southern hemispheres. This is really important. A lot of you guys didn't get this. Pretty much all locations on Earth have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime during, you know, the fall equinox. In other words, the lengths of everyone's day and night are equal. In the northern hemisphere, the first day of fall is the September equinox. In the southern hemisphere, the first day of fall is the March equinox. Okay? After fall, that's not y'all's bell, so don't worry about it. Okay. After fall comes the season of winter. And winter is basically the opposite of summer. So winter, the first day of winter, is the winter solstice. It is the shortest day of the year. The hemisphere having winter is tilted away from the sun, and that hemisphere's pole is on the nighttime side of the terminator. During winter, we have short days and long nights. We have less direct sunlight. The sun is lower in the sky. Sunlight is less concentrated and is spread out into a larger area. In the northern hemisphere, the first day of winter is the December solstice. In the southern hemisphere, the first day of winter is the June solstice. All right, after the season of winter comes spring. The first day of spring is the spring equinox. The sun is shining directly overhead at the equator. In other words, the sun is shining equally on both the northern and southern hemispheres. All locations on Earth have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. In other words, the length of everyone's day and night are equal. In the Northern Hemisphere, the first day of spring is the March equinox. In the Southern Hemisphere, the first day of spring is the September equinox. Okay, and then obviously after spring comes summer and the whole cycle repeats, but obviously we've already done summer. Okay, summer is basically the season opposite of winter, and fall is basically the season that is opposite of spring. Okay, so fall and spring are about six months apart. Summer and winter are about six months apart. Okay. Okay, how, now we're going to look at some illustrations um, similar to some of the things that you have seen on the diagrams. And notice that these two are the same season. It's just maybe you're looking at the Earth from 
uh, one side of the solar system here and you're looking at the Earth from the opposite side of the solar system here. But notice it's the same season because in both cases the northern hemisphere is on the daytime side of the Terminator, the southern hemisphere is on the uh, nighttime side of the Terminator. So the northern hemisphere, since it's on the daytime side of the Terminator, this is summer for the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is having winter because the southern uh, the south pole is on the nighttime side of the terminator so there are your seasons there's how you know okay the next one is just the opposite north is on the nighttime side of the terminator south is on the daytime side of the terminator okay so the northern hemisphere is having winter time because it's on the nighttime side of the terminator Southern Hemisphere is having southern, summertime because it's on the daytime side of the hemisphere. Uh, sorry, on the daytime side of the Terminator. Last one. Notice that the Terminator runs directly from pole to pole. So neither one of your poles are on the nighttime side of the Terminator. So this is going to be either fall or spring. And you really can't tell who's having fall and who's having spring. Um, so just put for northern and, and, and southern hemisphere both, just put fall slash spring for both of them. How do you know? Because the terminator goes from north pole to south pole. Okay? All right. Last, equator versus the poles. So what kind of characteristics do we have for the equator? What kind of characteristics do we have for the poles? Um, at the equator, you have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness every day of the year. So 12 hours of daylight every day of the year if you live at the equator. The number of daylight hours does not vary at all. Or you could say the number of daylight hours does not change at all. The sun is sometimes directly overhead, but even when it's not, it is still high in the sky. The equator is the line that separates the Earth into northern and southern hemispheres. All right, let's go to the poles. At the summer solstice, the poles receive 24 hours of daylight and zero hours of night. At the winter solstice, the poles receive zero hours of daylight and 24 hours of night. Remember, because back up here, you know, when the pole is on the nighttime side of the Terminator, that's winter, and it's receiving no daylight. When the pole is on the daytime side of the Terminator, um, it's got daytime all the time and no nighttime. Okay, so at the poles, the number of daylight hours changes a lot or varies a lot over the course of a year. And at the poles, the sun is never high in the sky. It's always fairly low towards the horizon.